like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of September 7th, 2017. The first item is a poll hearing continued on a petition by Eversource Energy to relocate one utility pole on Wombeck Street in Roxbury, located on the southerly uh, side east of Herald Street. There was a poll hearing on July 13th, 2017, and the poll hearing was continued on both July 27th, 2017, and August 10th, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sheila Gillis here on behalf of Eversource. Um, we respectfully request to withdraw this petition at this time. So we will entertain your withdrawal without any prejudice, prejudice. Yes. on behalf of the commission. Yep. Excuse me? Without prejudice. Yes. 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 Uh, I'll entertain a motion to withdraw without prejudice. Second. I'll make a motion to withdraw the petition or to approve the Withdrawal of petition by Eversource Energy to relocate one utility pole on Wombeck Street. Um, as read to the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. The next item is a poll hearing on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. to install one utility pole on Lamson Street in East Boston, located on its northwesterly side, southwest of Maverick Street. Good morning again. I'm here on behalf of Eversource and we request um, a grant of location to install pole 33506A on Lampson Street. Um, this pole is um, to provide service to a new apartment building located at 320 Maverick Street. Sheila, the overhead wires that are going to come to this pole, overhead wires that are going to come to this pole, is it coming from two sides or just one side? Because we are very conscious about the wire clutter in addition to the poles. Do you know that detail or? Um, has staff looked at this thing and is yeah. it okay? Yeah. Compatible between the pole clutter and yeah, all that is holy and remote? What's out there? What type of pole was it? So the adjacent poles are good. 45 foot glass two. Yes, I remember we talked about the, you know, we were reassessing the use of the fiber poles due to some structural issues. Oh no, this is a regular wood pole. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm right. sorry. This is a wood pole. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Questions or comments? Anybody from Verizon? There's a co petitioner. They're, they're not here. They we signed have, off yeah, on the petition. The, the petition. Okay. Amir Todd. Okay. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a, uh, a motion on the side. I'll make a motion to approve the joint petition by Eversource Energy in Verizon, New England, Inc to install one utility pole on Lampson Street, East Boston, located on its northwesterly side, southwest of Maverick Street. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a public hearing item that was continued. It's on a petition by the City of Boston Public Improvement Commission for the adoption of a city policy concerning updated design guidelines and requirements for sidewalk cafes within the public way. This was new business on June 8th, 2017. We had a public hearing on July uh, 13th, 2017, and a public hearing continued on August 24th, 2017. Uh, since the last uh, hearing, um, we have received comments from all commission members as well as Walk Boston. Um, we have responded to all of Walk Boston's comments, uh, uh, mostly with revisions if it was related to the policy or incorporation of their comments into our future checklist or uh, associated agreement. Um, I don't think that we have any remaining issues for the policy unless the commission has okay. any questions. So as far as there was a section that I wasn't aware of as far as parklets and utilizing the parking lane, who was that discussion with in the transportation department? The need. The need. Yes. All right. Um, so the, the uh, option for using that won't be available until he's completed the like how you would get the parklet first you know you'd have to get that through BTD before you could even come here and get it not one stop you come and you get everything so he needs to finish up some stuff on that parklet program before that would become viable we just didn't want to have to redo the policy once it did 
So first you get the park license, then you apply for a cafe license. Yeah, or we have to at least codify what our uh, parklet requirements so and the park, parklet goes through the permitting process, right? Uh, and and yes. the permit. Yes. Yeah. So it's public works and transportation. Correct. Yes. Other questions or comments? Yeah, so we've had uh, so, conversations yeah, with them you since close then. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So what about existing sidewalk cafes that might not conform to these guidelines but were approved or put in place before we adopted the guidelines? What are we going to do there? So we have a lot of cafes in that um, situation. If you are operating a cafe that has an existing cafe license, and that cafe is not meeting our current standards, the second that the cafe operator changes, they would have to restart the process. Um, if you are in compliance, the new operator can just assume the cafe that you had approved. Uh, if you'd now like to add one of these additional seating areas, you could come back here, you'd have to come back to readjust the limits of your cafe if you wanted to add curbside seating. Or so something. yeah, for example, they had a storefront seating, they want to add curbside seating, they have, we have to make sure that the storefront is conforming before we'll allow. Right, and you might have to adjust your storefront if you want to add curbside. So they're essentially coming back through this process to Very expand good. the cafe at any point. Thank you. So you're saying that if it's, if, if it's basically in conformance with the new regulation, that license can be transferred? So, right, if you, if a cafe, if an operating cafe today has a license and the restaurant changes, but the cafe meets our current standards, they can just readopt what the other cafe had. If it, that is no longer what our current standard is, they'd have to come in and reapply to meet our, our current standards. As if it was a new application. Exactly. Yep. Um, Will renovation potentially trigger that and force them to upgrade? Um, only if it was dramatically affecting how you got in and out of that restaurant and the configuration of the cafe. Right, so the front facade similar to the handicap requirement? For the upgrades? Right. right. Any questions or comments? No, I'm good. Todd. No, members of the public? Okay. I'll entertain a motion on this. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Public Improvement Commission for the adoption of a side of a city policy concerning updated design guidelines and requirements for sidewalk cafes within the public way. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to the public hearing section. First item is on a petition by Comcast of Boston, Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper. Lansdowne Street between Brookline Avenue and Ipswich Street. Ipswich Street from Lansdowne Street to a point 145 feet southwesterly. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. It's as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan Lansdowne Street dash Brookline Avenue to Ipswich Street, Boston, three sheets, dated April 6, 2017. Good morning. Tim Corthell, Comcast of Boston, Utility Coordinator. Uh, we're requesting grant of location to trench uh, the full length of Lansdowne Street, approximately 925 feet, and also about 145 feet in southern direction on Ipswich Street. Um, as we discussed before, this is a diverse feed for, uh, to upgrade uh, Back Bay and Fenway and whatnot in the financial district. Um, as discussed before, we'd be working around the Red Sox schedule. Hopefully they're away in a couple of weeks, so uh, we'd hope to, to get this uh, on the agenda as quick as possible. And if I recall correctly, between new business and now, you, there's, you've increased the number of uh, conduit and, and doubled the amount of city conduit that's available. Correct. Right? Uh, four one, in, one and one-fourth inch conduits that will be placed on the top of our uh, uh, four four-inch bundle. Make sure those city conduits, shadow conduits, are roped and tagged yep. specifically. Other questions or comments? Yeah, Mayor Todd? Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve a petition by Comcast of Boston Incorporated for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with, the, with city shadow 
within the following public ways in Boston proper. Lansdowne Street between Brookline Avenue and Ipswich Street. Ipswich Street between Lansdowne Street to a point 145 feet southwesterly as shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Lansdowne Street to Brookline Ave to Ipswich Street, Boston, three sheets dated April 6, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The next item is on a petition by the Pipefitters Association Local Union 537 for the acceptance of pedestrian easements adjacent to the following public ways in Dorchester. Enterprise Street on its southwesterly side at address number 40, generally between Willow Court and a point southeast of Jankarski Way. And Clapp Street on its northeasterly side, generally southeast of Enterprise Street. This was new business on August 24, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan, Enterprise Street and Clapp Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated July 2nd, 2017. Today, with Brian Kelly uh, from the Pipe Fitters Union. We have Matt Formicola, who's the uh, project architect from Spagnolo Geismas, and Jen Mullen uh, from Lemonbrook, who's the landscape architect. Uh, the petition is for some pedestrian easements to allow wider sidewalks on Enterprise Street and Clapp Street so we have room to put in street trees, uh, get a compliant five foot clear uh, sidewalk. Uh, and then put in some pervious pavers and other treatments to get to uh, complete street standards uh, and the easements necessary given the narrow width of the uh, sidewalk today. Amy, these beds obviously need to be recorded. Yes. So the signature block needs to be adjusted. Yes. So yep. please advise them absolutely. to read with the plans so that the bylaws that come through you can. Yes, absolutely. We also need yeah. So they, yeah. they know. Yep. Yeah. Other questions or comments? No. I'm here, Todd. No. Members of the public? You're here for the poll hearing and not for this item, is that right? Uh, pardon? You're here for the poll hearing and not for this item? Uh, yes, for the poll hearing. They withdrew that, uh, actually. Oh, I missed it? Yeah. Wait. Oh, I'm oh, fine. Um, I'll entertain a motion on this. I'll make a motion uh, on a petition by Pipe Fitters Association Local 537 for the acceptance of pedestrian easements on Enterprise Street and Clapp Street as read into the record by the chair, shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement, Enterprise Street and Clapp Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated July 2nd, 2017. Or Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. The next item is on a petition by the Pipefitters Association Local Union 537 for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, consisting of sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavements, street trees, and driveway curb cuts. Enterprise Street on its southwesterly side at address number 40, generally between Willow Court and a point southeast of Jankarski Way and Clapp Street on its northeasterly side, generally southeast of Enterprise Street. This was new business on August 24th, 2017, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair, repair Plan 40 Enterprise Street, Clapp Street, Dorchester, three sheets dated August 15th, 2017. Good morning again. So the, uh, again, Steve Matarano, Polar Engineering. Um, the specific repairs, uh, as, as I just described, are uh, basically some previous paver treatments as well as street trees that are uh, they're in, they're in a two and a half by two and a half foot tree pit which is sort of the, the minimum on our complete street so we we're enhancing it with some structural soil underneath and the limits of the structural soil are shown in the details of the landscape plans uh, and then there's there's some aeration pipes and other appurtenances in the detail there is not an under drain connection to the to the city uh, catch basins because are you planning to irrigate these? They'll be bagged irrigated. Yeah, the bags the okay, so you're not going to have a domestic water yeah. connection for irrigation. Right. Okay. Uh, and then the 
so that that's that that is the specific repairs that we're requesting along the sidewalks, and then there is also a 30-foot curb cut that we're requesting on Clap Street, which is for uh, the loading zone, given the, the tightness of the street. Has the maintenance agreement, I know Tom's not here, do you know the status of yeah, it? It's submit, yeah, it's been submitted and it's in draft, but... So, before we, yeah, yeah. before we... We'll have resolved this before they have issued uh, permits. And it's in the new format. It will be in the new format. Um, so, on the pedestrian bump out on Enterprise Street, that kind of forces um, you know traffic onto Jan. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a 36-inch drain that runs underneath that bump out. So you're not showing any street trees there, but don't plant any street trees there. Don't plant trees on top of the drain. Um, and then you've already stated that you're not going to irrigate and there's not going to be an under drain connection so you won't need a GSA or an additional site plan for VWSC. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, I will send you an email to get this documented, but the Boston Main Interceptor cuts through the site. You've shown that on the VWSC site plan. Uh, that is one of the most critical pipes in our system and we would like to have a vibration monitoring when you excavate the foundations. So between the corner of the building closest to the pipe and, and the pipe itself, standard vibration deformation monitoring, um, and that's only necessary during the foundation and excavation portion of the project. And that's to, that's to ensure that there's no adverse effects from digging, vibrating, things like that on the pipe. Because you are going down to the same depth as that pipe. Yep. And, and that's the purpose of going down that deep is to protect the pipe yep. now and in the future. Yep, so it's just during construction you need to make, make sure that there's not excessive vibration. Thank you. Mike, how can we ensure that that action is actually undertaken? Uh, how can we verify or certify through the permitting process? Who issues the permit? I'm going to do it. It is us, Public Works. Can we put that as a permit condition so that the vibration monitoring is done? Because yes, basically we are asking them to do it. How do we, not that we, mm -hmm. how can we know for certain that you are undertaking that activity? That's a great question because that is a typical comment from BWSC. Uh, we've seen that on other projects recently uh, on Harrison Avenue, Washington Street. Uh, we'll, we'll see that again on uh, Lomasti Way. Because of the criticality of this asset, Mike, I just want to make sure that it gets done and the contractor that comes to pull the permits, sir? <clears throat> yes. Brian Kelly, business manager of the Pipe Fitters. I have a meeting immediately following this one with the general contractor. Yes. It's John Moriarty and Associates. It, Could you please? First order of business, I'll take up with them thanks. that we need to have this in place and we, we want a, uh, a thorough records uh, kept of the, of the vibration analysis. So also we can insert that into the construction manager. <coughs> we do that with drone control and we do it for other yes. stuff. So we'll just plug it in with Moriarty's uh, CMP. And I talked about that with Amy, and I think um, Chong is adding some sort of standard language. We emailed yep. back and forth about that. Right. Yeah, and we're also looking at a way to more appropriately track the things that fall out of these hearings into one location um, that can be used going forward. Perfect. One more. Just one more thing to, to, to just kind of reassure you that we want to make sure we take all precautionary steps. We've already uh, videotaped the, the entire line from from sewer cap to sewer cap or wherever, a anything that's gonna be potentially impacted with this project. So we, we, we've already taken proactive steps to ensure that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's not um, out of the ordinary to excavate close to a large asset like this, but when we do it, we wanna make sure that we take steps to make sure that it's functioning in the same condition that it was before the project. So. And there's a condition in our site plan approval to do a post-construction videotape to confirm everything is still in good working order when we're done. Perfect. Thank you. If I can recall correctly, there was some discussion during new business about the sequencing of this work, particularly on Enterprise Street, as it relates to some of the other work that's happening in the area. Is that is that conversation progressed? Is that yes? So okay. Um, we're my firm is also the civil engineer on the South Bay project yeah. and working with the Pritzker, who's a residential developer, yeah. uh, and they're using this. Th those two 
pieces of stuff they use in the same contractor. Yes. We've already contacted them okay. uh, to set up a coordination meeting once Great. our construction is ready to start. Great. Uh, so, and they, they're technically building the bump out. That's, that's part of the South Bay project, not oh. part of this project, but we're coordinating that work with them. Perfect. Other questions or comments? No. Amir Todd, members of the public. All right, I'll entertain the motion. A motion on a petition by Pipefitters Association Local Union 537 for the making of specific repairs as read into the record by the chair. We're shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan. 40 Enterprise Street, Clapp Street, Dorchester. Three sheets dated August 15th, 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The fourth item is on a petition by the Master Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals for the widening and relocation of the existing right-of-way lines of Perkins Street, a public way in Roxbury at the northwesterly corner of its intersection with Day Street. This was new business on August 24th, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Austin Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan, 29 Perkins Street, Boston, Roxbury, one sheet dated May 2017. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kathy Collins representing the MSPCA. Hi, Joe. Joe Fleury, Public Works. Good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So the petition before you is the widening and relocation of Perkins Street. Uh, of 840 square feet. And the intent is to improve the pedestrian and vehicular sight lines as well as provide space for future public art display. Intersection Perkins is today 840 square feet. Right now there's a six foot high retaining wall that will cut down to 18 inches. So the sight lines will be improved and it also allows space for a public art display. That we, we, the City Public Works, we truly appreciate your willingness and consideration in supporting this wonderful project, and I want to publicly thank you for that. Thank you. We are, it's a pleasure. It will make this place look great. Terrific. Other questions or comments? Jamie? Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve the petition by the Massachusetts Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals for the widening and relocation of the existing right of way lines of Perkins Street, Roxbury, at its northwesterly corner at, of its intersection with Day Street. All is shown on a set of plans entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Widening and Relocation Plan, 29 Perkins Street, Boston, Roxbury, one sheet dated May 2007. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, guys. Fifth item is on a petition by the Boston Public Schools for the making of specific repairs within West Edam Street, Boston proper, located on its southwesterly side at 380 Shaman Ave, consisting of a new non-standard curb cut. This was new business on August 24th, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs, West Edam Street, South End, one sheet dated August 2017. Good morning, John Smith with Niche Engineering. This application is to reconstruct and formalize an existing curb cut that serves as a bus drop off for the Blackstone Elementary School. The existing, uh, drive, existing driveway is asphalt and non-compliant. The new driveway opening will be approximately 38 feet wide, uh, constructed of concrete materials with three foot curb radii uh, in compliance with city standards and will provide a better and safer pedestrian access. Uh, John was slightly beyond the scope, but the, this is where the buses come in uh, for the Blackstone and then they exit on Washington Street, is that correct? That's correct. They come in here, they enter here, and they exit down. Other questions or comments? Any here, Todd? Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve a petition by Boston Public Schools for the making of specific repairs within West Dedham Street, as read into the record by the chair, as shown in a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs, West Dedham Street, South End, one sheet dated August 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. 
Moving on to new business. The first item is 33-61 Temple Street, Ridgeway Lane, Boston proper. Uh, highway discontinuance and vertical discontinuances on a set of joint, a set of petitions by JDMD owner LLC. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, gentlemen on the board. It's a pleasure to be before you this morning. Sean O'Donovan, uh, project attorney for JDND owner. Um, I'm here this morning with uh, our team uh, for the 45 Temple Street project. Um, the project will convert an educational institution building formerly owned by Suffolk University into 70 residential condominiums with accessory parking for 50 vehicles underneath. Uh, the Boston, uh, the P Boston Planning and Development Agency voted uh, to approve the project on July 14, 2016. The Zoning Board of Appeals voted to grant uh, certain variances to the project on August 23, 2016. In connection with the development, the facade of certain parts of the building will change. Such changes result in encroachments onto the sidewalks surrounding the building and therefore require vertical and surface discontinuances from your commission. Uh, I'm here with our architect, Matt Duggan, from uh, the architectural team, our engineer, Chris Iannuzzi, uh, from EBI, and our survey uh, from Han our surveyor, Greg Gould, from Hancock Associates, who are here to walk you through the project and answer any of your questions. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You can walk us through what uh, the specifics are? Sure. Thank you. So the, um, the project consists of two buildings. The only one we're really looking at is on the north side of the site which um, this is where we're replacing the facade. The existing facade on Temple Street, the existing condition encroaches into the uh, right of way by 0.49 feet. And it currently is not, it does not have continuous insulation, it does not have, um, it does not have a cavity to allow water to move out of it. So to upgrade the building, uh, both thermal and for moisture mitigation reasons, we're extending the facade, the facade out five inches. Um, in addition to that, we also do have window sills. So since the building already approaches, those do as well. And then um, the project went through a design review with the Beacon Hill Architectural Commission. And through that process, uh, the design now includes a canopy at the front entrance. So that is also um, the other part of this continuance that we are on. Uh, is there a reason why the canopy is not going through a license agreement versus a discontinuance? There are bays. There, 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 are, there, there are bay windows. No, this gentleman said, that, is it the bay windows or the canopy? That we should have a Because, could you please clarify the vertical space that is being discontinued? Is it for bay windows, which is a more permanent structure, versus a canopy, which is a... Not a permanent structure. Permanent structures we discontinue. Other, stru other structures such as canopies or awnings, we have a license agreement. So can you help clarify that for us, please? You do not have any windows. There's you do not. You do not have any windows. You have a canopy here, which is uh, constructed. It's not an awning. It's, it's a steel um, canopy. So it's a, it's a part of a building element. Could so you mean still consistent right. with the discontinuance? And Amy, in terms of who owns the real estate, which uh, the dollar value of the discontinued areas, both vertical and so, sorry? It, it needs to be appraised. So this goes through the PIC process, yes. and these folks are aware of that? Yes. We have you.
Has this gone through a BWOC site plan? Yes. Yes, it has. Has it been approved? Has been approved, yes. Okay. Even though the maybe the prior prior you had encroachments without causing okay. yes title right. cleanup so the net loss of yep. sidewalk space so whatever the sidewalk we lose five inches yeah so the left. net loss on the surface is inches and everything else is air rights yeah right so, so it's just the, it's just the insulation of the facade that's actually encroaching within the public way that you would walk along everything else is above grade and after the five inches are after those five inches less of sidewalk space what's the resulting uh, remaining sidewalk width reason why the chief and I'm making those points, the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board resides in a building right around the corner and it is a bit ironic of how some of the sidewalks may not be the best uh, conditions. There are some very narrow sidewalks, so we want to be sensitive to any further reduction of sidewalk widths right next to the building that houses the architectural, Massachusetts architectural access both. It would be more ironic than it needs to be. So we are very sensitive, so hopefully when you do the construction, that there is no further unknown encroachments into our space. That would be, takes a little bit more awkward. What's going to be the new material for the envelope of the building? It's a brown brick. There is some granite as well. That that's what the finished product will be facing the street. Correct. Granite brick. And the awnings uh, for ISD heat trays trains properly. The awnings. Are you putting the awnings after you discontinue? At which point, Amy, does ISD have the rights to clarify or specify the type of right? Trade so these, existing? yeah, this is the existing what's coming out, and mm -hmm. anything beyond that would come back through. Um, for approval of both its aesthetics and its heat trace internally heat drained, trace. all of that, those requirements. So just, okay. Yeah. So we, we've reviewed the construction management plan with the general contract and said we, you know, it's going to be a challenging project, but I think they have a good tact on the methodology that they're taking. I know Mr. O'Donovan followed up with Ben Starr at the Beacon Hill Civic Association traffic. I appreciate that. That's uh, very helpful because we want to keep them uh, involved in the process as we go along. So thank you for that. Absolutely. We'll be meeting with them next week again. Okay. Other questions or comments? If, uh, do you have any uh, butters? I'm not seeing that on here. Direct the butters to this. Uh, well, within 300 feet, of course we do. I know you know. I, but so to answer your question, direct the butters. N nobody attached to our building or buildings. We have the uh, Ridgeway Lane, Dern, and uh, Temple around us, and then we have our own fee-owned um, alleyway, but it's ours. Uh, we're using that to get in and out of the garage, uh, which is subterranean, of course, via an elevator. And so next to that alleyway, we have, um, there are two buildings that then continue down Ridgeway and Temple. So they, they back up to one another couple of uh, brick buildings and they, they start to move in a uh, easterly direction towards Cambridge Street. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor Todd, members of the public. All right, it's two weeks enough time? Absolutely. All right, I'll see you on the 21st. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item is St. Cyprian's Place at 1065 Tremont Street, Roxbury. Vertical discontinuances and specific repairs on a set of joint petitions by 1065 Tremont Street, LLC, and the Boston Redevelopment Authority.
Good morning. My name is Kelly Robbins. Uh, I work for the general contractor who represents 1065 Tremont Street, LLC. I'm here today um, to um, request approval uh, for vertical discontinuance along with Elaine Brophy from the BPDA. Um, we intend to build a 31,500 square foot addition on an existing building. Um, it will contain 28 residential units and is six stories. You'll see from our elevation drawing that we our bay windows begin at an elevation of 10 feet above the sidewalk, um, and uh, is they're approximately three feet, or I'm sorry, eight feet wide and three feet deep. So th this project is kind of filling in that uh, empty space in the block there. It is. Can you walk us through the specific repairs? So um, I was just speaking with Todd. I, we actually would request to withdraw the specific repairs. We Justice. understand our proposed curb cut is smaller than um, and could be handled on an administrative level. Yep. Very good. Yeah, we just requested that they actually bring that curb cut application to the next hearing rather than uh, vote on the separate. Yep. Got it. Will you submit the construction manner plan for this uh, project? I'm sorry? Have you submitted a CMP to the department for this project? Uh, I will check with our site supervisor on that. My understanding is that was in the works. It's in the works. Okay. And you're, what's the captain contractor? Hacon. Okay. And this is a small project review? It is a small project, yes. Okay. Other questions and comments? So the discontinuous is for canopies? It's just for the bay window. The okay. bay window is there. Yep. Highly, when will the BR, when will BPD, sorry. We're both, so <laughs> we cannot make a mistake. <laughs> uh, when will BPDA take a vote on the, does BPDA need to take a vote on this? Yes, and we are voting next Thursday, next Thursday on the 14th at our meeting, and then we'll record Recording. before um, public hearing here, okay. the taking. And it's from the sidewalk. Yes, that's right. And I, I should know, but how far does the adjacent building on St. Cyprian project out to St. Cyprian Street? The building to the left or the building? On to the Tremont Street side. On the Tremont the, yeah. Street side. Um, I don't know exactly. My understanding is that they're about the same to give a nice straight visual across the street, but I can come back with that dimension at the public hearing. That'd be terrific. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, you may have said this while I was thinking about something else. So within the discontinued space, you are creating bay windows. That's correct. And it is going to be designed and constructed in such a way so that it doesn't create uh, issues. And uh, you will still review that stuff through ISD, right? Oh, yes, that's correct. Our plans with are, are with ISD, and, um, and we expect to receive the permit uh, shortly. Are you going down on this project? Are you Putting uh, levels underground? No. no. There, oh, there is a basement underneath this level here. The, the underneath that left-hand bay where you see the where the curb cut is going, the smaller curb cut. That's a trash room. There is a, a level below, a basement below. So you are excavating. We are yes. Foundation and guide walls. Everything's on your property. Everything's on our property. Yes, that's correct. Do you have an approved site plan from Boston Water and Sewer yet? Um, I will certainly check into that. He's received this plan, um, and I'm just awaiting his approval. Um, okay, so you're in the, kind of the comment yes. period? That's exact. So it's yes. in the works? It's in the works, yeah. But it's not approved yet. Okay. Other questions or comments? Maybe Mayor Todd, members of the public. It's two weeks enough time? Yes. Okay. We'll see you on the 21st. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. The third item of new business is Brookland Avenue, Yaki Way, Van Ness Street, Ipswich Street, Boylston Street, Boston proper. Uh, city shadow rental amended grants of location on a set of joint petitions by 186 Communications LLC, Verizon, and Verizon Business. Good morning. Good morning. Jay Dunn from Wave Guide on behalf of 186 Communications. Jeff Harrington from 186 Communications. Petitions uh, cover 
uh, leasing of uh, city shadow duct on Brookline Ave, section Brookline Ave. Uh, but then we progress into uh, MCI Verizon Business Duct, um, and then uh, Verizon uh, Corporate Lease Duct, back to Verizon Business, and then uh, some city shadows. So. Um, we're with Todd, it's going to be best to present that as one uh, piece. Um, and as you can see on the, on the mass, uh, the reason for the city shadow on Brookline Ave, there's no capacity in Verizon business slash MCI duct. Um, so we want to utilize, utilize that along Brookline Ave. And then Verizon business, we're able to make it um, all the way down uh, the rest of Brookline Ave, Rocky Way, VNS. Uh, and then we transition to Ipswich Street. We're able to utilize the least horizon corporate conduit. Uh, and so we get back down to Coylston Street, um, where we utilize the, the Verizon business and then connect back into uh, our back on Coylston and Massaf. So, appreciate the fact that you are utilizing existing conduit systems to serve your needs as it should. Uh, at the public hearing, does Verizon need to be here, Amy, or are they just on the petition? No, so typically they have to go through an entire process with Verizon um, that... No, no, on the petition, do yep. they need to be physically here, yeah. Amy, for the... No. Okay, so just... Verizon sign would the... not like to be here okay. um, for each. Uh, right. The next question. Is this to serve your needs you're not digging here, but in the totality of your needs, do you need to dig anywhere else? You know, I want to know whether we are seeing a small part of your grand picture or the full picture. Absolutely. And we have um, already had two excavations on, along Ipswich Street that were approved last year that have been excavated and installed um, to join from the Verizon business system to the Verizon core system that provided the continuity. Um, right now, the end location was what I refer to as the old Sears property. That was the end of the project, so that's where we wanted. That's where we needed to get to for this particular project. And then tying back into the level three system, as everybody knows, that's sort of like the fiber system for for the city, if, if you will. So really, that was the construction project for this request for the service order. You know, obviously, we'd like to continue to move into sort of the medical areas, what they call it, on, on our side of the house, but there is no current service orders. And I also understand that um, that area has been reconstructed due to some of the different work that's in there. And we're aware of, uh, you know, there's limited conduit in that area, and obviously it's going to be repaved. So anything that's done is probably going to be more of a fiber lease from existing providers and or maybe coming in from another direction um, unless someone's willing to to fund, you know, a sort of rather large bill to get through that area, which I don't think is going to happen. But appreciate you understanding the city's desire to maintain its infrastructure without the streets being dug up. They've and done it, a ton of work to ensure that they're doing as little digging as yes, possible here. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Have you been checked in with the transportation department for future build out of our interconnect system? No, we're not giving away a city shadow. Yeah, so uh, in our, our original mapping of uh, City Shadow, we sat down with Don about all of the stuff that he would want and has, um, and uh, I think that he's got he's got well, everything he wants of what we've got already. Excellent. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Game here, Todd. Members of the public. All right, it's two weeks enough time. All right, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thank you very much. Our final item of new business, uh, Dorchester Avenue, South Boston, widening, relocation, and extension on a joint petition by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the City of Boston Office of the Chief of Streets, Transportation, and Sanitation. Good afternoon, I'm David Gian Grande from Design Consultants. I'm a principal at Design Consultants. I have with me uh, Brian Valancourt from AECOM. Um, today we're here to discuss a widening, relocation, and extension uh, request 
for Dorchester Ave. It is in conjunction with the uh, South Bay Harbor Trail project. That is a collaboration between BTD, Boston Public Works, and the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, the, um, uh, Mass DOT. Uh, we have, uh, as, as part of our requirement for the say, uh, South Bay Harbor Trail project, we have to provide a right-of-way certificate. And as part of our research, we found a piece of the, uh, uh, of the corridor as, um, that would normally be assumed that it was city-owned or state-owned was owner unknown. So what we're trying to accomplish here today is a clarification of who owns that property. It's roughly 2,544 uh, uh, 2, square feet. Um, and we had a, a title abstract, a title exam done, which uh, Brian's company, AECOM, um, uh, sourced. And we found that there was two potential owners of that property. Uh, one, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, and two, the city of Boston. And what we believe happened is that at, at uh, Fort Point Channel, uh, there has been a number of different uh, bridge configurations, and um, in the layout of Dorchester Ave, we do have a specific location for that. So they created this gore piece. What we'd like to do is clarify that and, um, and do that by uh, this particular vehicle. I do want to add that there are current improvements in that area and um, they have a public purpose. So again, uh, we have crosswalks, pedestrian ramps, and a sidewalk in that area. And uh, this will facilitate uh, um, uh, proper use and, and um, ownership of that uh, area of Dorchester Ave. David, within this new layout area, the Fort Point Channel, is that the Broadway Bridge? Which bridge structure comes? It's the post office. Yes. This is dead end into the post office, post office. gate. So there are are there any uh, retaining walls, any, any yeah. other structures that we, the city, are? Uh, well, so what we did is we went out and we physically located the bridge abutment so that we would not be having responsibility for future maintenance of the bridge abutment, et cetera. So we located the bridge abutment and made sure that we were on what would be the south side of that bridge abutment and outside of the uh, um, Mass DOT right of way. So that's where it ends, prior to the bridge. Uh, does that answer your question, Carl? So yeah. essentially, it, there was an expansion joint at a bridge abutment. We moved the expansion joint to this bridge abutment. We need to close this gap and just make it a street. Uh, all right, no, I, I'll take a look at the... Yeah. Look at the uh, location and make sure that we are not doing something that's going to further complicate things, but Right, this is just clean up. Support. This is actually a road today. You can go there and drive on it. Um, so it should probably be within a right of way. Yeah, up to this point, you can drive on it. Yes. This is an area that's near and dear to my heart. This is where I ride my bike around. And I am so confused when I get to this spot right here. Uh, who owns what exactly? You know, it's post office, gated, you can't come through this way, abrupt right-hand turn on the harbor trail. So if this is an enabling project, so the Harbor Trail has to go on our property, so we're gonna make this, clean this up, the ownership here. What is the improvement? Is it going to be a new and better sidewalk, a new and better pedestrian ramps? What? So this came, there's the, Har the South Bay Harbor Trail project which is coming through here. This issue was of a gap in our right of way was uncovered through that project. But through that, yeah, I know the continuation of that bike path coming through there and the adjustment to pull it all the way through and down is what essentially that project will. Yeah, so I'm asking specifically, we needed to take this so that we could make an improvement? We didn't actually, no, this, so a is new, just, a this, is, this is cleanup. Um, okay. This should be in the right of way today. It's, it's part of the road. Uh, it's it. just that the abutment moved and we never closed the gap between the old abutment and the new so, abutment. So the layout plan is clear. The layout plan ends before the bridge abutment. There is sidewalk, there are crosswalks, there are ped ramps that are outside the layout of Dorchester Ave. We want to extend the layout of Dorchester Ave just prior to the bridge so that we can clean up. It's sort of a housekeeping uh, task. 
In terms of improvements at that corner, yeah. most of the improvements are going to occur on Gillette property, which we have a permanent easement for. Uh, that's being finalized so that we can make it more accessible uh, to actually make the turn onto the existing harbor uh, at that location. Yep. So I think that probably answers your question and I hope it make clarifies. That turn more severe. Uh, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Just for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I take it at high speed. So. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Boston. Yeah. <laughs> David, no slope easements or anything that may have been there any slope easements as part of the bridge that may have been in We state? align this, we have a, a record plan of what is the post office right of way um, and th this stop, th these lines are that, That's correct. And, and AECOM did, a, as I had mentioned, a comprehensive research. We had old bridge easements. We, we, we vetted all of that uh, and, and came out with an opinion that AECOM had so that we're confident that we know where the, the Mass DOT right of way ends, we know where the layout of Dorchester Ave ends, and we know that there is a gap. Except and this is just strictly house, housekeeping. Other questions or comments? Then you're Todd. Two weeks enough time? I'm sorry. Is two weeks enough time for uh, a public hearing? Yes. 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 Great. We'll see you on. David, is that okay? I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the, the project. We have a right of way certificate that we need to get in, so I guess is that yes. appropriate? Right, so yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great. Yes. David, Brian, thanks so much. <laughs> I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved.